Hi everyone, it's Victor speaking. And today I am here to speak to you about the weekly forecast, uh, the third week of um, May, which is going to be starting on the 17th. So I'm going to try to show you how the stars might want to guide you this week. Uh, we're going to be speaking about a general influence, but if you would like something more specific about your chart, then probably you should be consulting with a professional astrologer, which also can be mine as well. So you will find my details in the description box. So I would like to give you a couple of heads up what we will be talking about today. One is going to be Sun Trining Pluto. Uh, that's the beginning of the week. Then we're going to be speaking about Venus North Node Conjunction followed by Venus sextile, Chiron, and heaven also a little bit of a, a, a T-square between Venus, Juno, and Saturn as well. Uh, then we're going to be speaking about the Venus and uh, Saturn trying today, then Sun moving into the sign of Gemini, and lastly, we're going to be speaking about the Sun-Jupiter square, which we will be closing the week with. So there is plenty to cover. Stay till the end uh, because I'm going to try to shed you some great information about what to expect. I feel like this week, the best days to kind of pursue anything new is more about the 20, 21st and the 22nd. But I would like to mention that this week we've got three planets out of bound. Uh, moon, which is um, still out of bound on the 17th in the sign of Cancer. Then Mercury uh, and Mars the entire week, actually. Now, if you are unaware of what uh, out of bound means, basically it's like a wild ride type of energy. So it makes us restlessness, restless, uh, but it gives us a, a very eccentric influence and sometimes out of control energy as well. So I usually describe the out of bound planets like when the cat leaves home and the mice are dancing around type of things. And that's because the planets are getting outside of the orb of the sun. So there is no control over those planets. Now, moon is in the sign of, I mean, moon rules cancer. So you want to be looking at where uh, the cancer cusp is in your chart. That could go a little bit out of control. Very similarly with Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini, and even Mars, which is Scorpio and Aries. So those uh, uh, house cusps in your uh, chart can be a little bit of a wild ride. But let's start with our first aspect, which is going to be taking place on the 17th of May, and that's going to be Sun trining Pluto. This is a quite a beneficial aspect, I would say. However, with Pluto, which tries to push us to the edges, it kind of, um, this combination talks about uh, revealing where your limits are. Uh, it might be just a psychological subconscious method that I'm digging deeper and then I'm having a look at what my limits are or what is the threshold between my fears and my life mission. So this aspect, very much about highlighting what is your mission, how to come out of a dark period and how to kind of gain some light in our life. It also might be showing or talking about what my powers lie, what are my true missions? How can I make a bigger impact on others and on myself as well? So how can I look more powerful to, to others? Um, this is an aspect which talks about depth, intensity and power. So uh, this is a good aspect, actually. I kind of like it because it really asks you the question that are you aware of your true magic? And uh, do I know how to use that? And then once we start digging a little bit deeper, then we can get to know um, something more about our core self and core intention. Um, both of the planets are very much related to authority figures. So it's very possible as well to have a great chat with your bosses. Uh, they might be able to actually motivate you, empower you to do something better. And therefore you feel 
overall a lot more positive about your work environment as well. I would also say that it kind of has got this element of realizing that no one is actually better or worse than me. So it kind of helps you to go through a internal changes. Probably you are a lot more capable of understanding and even discovering secrets as well. Or you might actually uh, are able to get an answer for something you have been seeking uh, uh, in a long time. Probably uh, you are a little bit more willing to take a closer look at yourself, but others as well. And it could really help you to have a greater understanding about yourself and other people as well um, in life. I would also see that um, this might be talking about overcoming some of the past actions we had, something which might be holding us back. And it spotlights some of your fears. You're realizing that, oh yeah, this is something which has been holding me back. So it's time to kind of eliminate that. And that's what really Pluto talks about. So eliminating everything, whatever is, um, whatever is not serving us anymore. So, but this is a brilliant day to, for instance, go for a job interview because it's easier to stick into people's minds. It's easier to kind of show confidence because you feel a lot more powerful. You might even feel that you are quite invincible and you can be acting like a superhero in a sense. But as I said, Pluto energy always brings around kind of like emptying the bin, taking out the garbage type of energy. So whatever is not needed, I have to eliminate, eliminate that self. So the sun is kind of like highlighting the darker corner of your psyche as well. So it's very good to do some type of research about yourself. Now, the following day, uh, Venus is going to be conjuncting North Node, which is going to be happening on 11 degrees of uh, Gemini. Now, because of this um, uh, Gemini and Venusian energy, it very much talks about connections, the union uh, side of things. So I find pleasure in connecting with people. I want to be making allies with others. I want to build a stronger network for others. Uh, it might be based on some of the common goals and visions which we can be sharing with others. But there is always a silver lining with North Node because it has got that insatiable hunger. So we can have cravings for closeness. We can have cravings to belong to someone or even we can have cravings to, uh, for sweet things. The whole idea about North Node is that it's very hard to satisfy if it conjunct any planet. So we can start eating a lot more. We can actually kind of not having boundaries when I go outside, for instance, and I forget about social distancing or I just want to be hanging out with uh, friends. Um, this aspect also talks about kind of like finding someone I can rely on to have a quality time with. But um, because of the Gemini energy, which is talking about, you know, which is which loves talking and flirting, we might forget to listen to others. So it's also very important with this aspect that we become more adaptable and we want to be academate, academating others as well. So being flexible to kind of create connections to others is possible. Now, North Node is a karmic point in the chart. It's kind of like the shadow part of the moon. So uh, where basically the moon and the sun are crosses path. So it could re and sun and the moon very much about the cosmic union of a man and a woman. So this aspect could really talk about some karmic affairs as well. Meeting someone uh, kind of out of the blue by maybe being with the friends um, in the park and so forth. But at the same time, because of the Gemini uh, quality to it, 
there must be an element of a balance, what I say and what I'm told as well. So whenever a planet is conjuncting North Node, it's basically creating new karma. And you might actually start noticing more synchronities in the world around you. You might um, begin. You might begin to see kind of like a clearer picture of your life purpose and your mission as well. You might uh, want to be kind of fulfilling a long-term goal or aspiration, and this is going to be kind of the start of it. So a conjunction is always about a new start. So whatever Venus rules in your chart, it might show that it's going to be affecting you in the next nine to 14 months, or even a little bit more, uh, while Venus is also going to be starting a new cycle with North Node. So you might actually see that people are gonna see some changes within yourself, maybe changes in your behavior or changes around your look as well. So Venus really much talks about the way I look like, the things I like, I, I dislike, and these could go um, kind of, it, it, these could be very noticeable in your um, uh, behavior. Um, I also would say that when Venus and the North Node are connecting, actually, it's very easy that we get discouraged by minor problems as well. But usually it turns out just great because Venus is usually a benefit planet. And Venus also has got strength, has got some strength as well in the sign of Gemini. So this might be asking you the question, are you investing in, in your beauty? Are you making time for your friends? How do you spend your money? Because we can have an insatiable hunger around money as well. And because it's in a mutable sign at the moment, it's more about spending what we need. So imagine that you go to a, um, I don't know, a bookstore, for instance, with Gemini. And uh, instead of uh, buying just one book, I'm going to be buying plenty of them because I also have got some type of cravings go going on. So there is this hungriness going for possessions because Venus rules Taurus. So, so as I said, Venus does show in your chart how you try, how you tend to be spending your money. You might wanna be looking at where Gemini cusp is in your chart. Maybe that's going to be the area of life where you spend a little bit more. But also Venus is all about spreading love. So it does talk about somehow showing, uh, receiving love as well as something to do with forgiveness. So this could be a period of time when you actually have to forgive, for instance, a friend of yours or someone in your immediate environment. Or is it just the fact that you're gonna have to forgive yourself for something? Uh, or are you just holding on to your possessions and uh, you've got a little bit of a guilt over that, that I've spent way too much money. So watch out for sweet tooth. We can become a lot more flirtatious as well around these, time, uh, around these times. And we can also have a very enhanced senses. So maybe when we touch someone, we kind of feel a sparkle with that or our smelling skills is just gonna be a lot more stronger. So, but at the same time, we might want to be receiving more love. We want more sensuality in, a, in our relationship. And the danger of this aspect is that it's kind of never enough. So there is this give and take, how much love do I get and how much love do I give to my uh, loved ones? Of course, there is also the money aspect of Venus. So it might be also talking about that somehow I'm looking for growing money. And it might be a realization that money doesn't grow on every single tree. So we're gonna have to use the Gemini traits, which is all about uh, kind of spotting patterns and planning things out how I can make more money for myself. Now, on the very same day, Venus is actually sextiling Chiron. Um, so I would like to grab the opportunity to speak a little bit more, <coughs> more about Chiron and Venus aspect. 
because this is very much about healing the heart. And, uh, you know, as I said, Venus in Gemini might tend to be um, spending a little bit more money because that's one of the ways I can actually heal myself. So um, the Venus Chiron aspect is all about the opportunity to embrace our vulnerability and somehow healing our heart. So Venus is the planet of love, a relationship, your personal values, something like what you like, what you dislike, and what is important to you. Now, Chiron is the wounded healer, and it could show the area of life where we might be broken and kind of where we need to make the biggest transformation. Now, I would like to mention that Chiron is actually between um, Mars and Jupiter, so therefore, Chiron always connects the visible and the invisible forces, because Mars is one of the last personal planets. Actually, in astronomy, Mars is not necessarily a personal planet because it's already outside of the orbit of the sun. But in astrology, we tend to be looking at it as a uh, personal planet. So somehow it connects the personal wisdom with uh, something which makes us to get out of bed and also something to do with the higher wisdom. So Chiron, uh, whenever Chiron is, it somehow always pulls in your Mars and Jupiterian energies as well, because there is always a little bit of a healing to do around that. Now, so Chiron kind of shows in your chart where you are feel broken or somehow inadequate. Uh, so now Chiron is um, um, still in the sign of Aries. So this brokenness could be really about the foundation of who we are, because Aries is something to do with your identity. What motivates me? What gets me out of bed? So, and remember at the beginning, I said that Mars is out of bound at the moment. So it could really go uh, kind of out of control as well, that I really want to heal myself as soon as possible. Uh, but also with this, there could be an element of a shame, brokenness coming into that, which is getting somehow triggered here. And sextile is a Venusian energy. So we're going to have to heal that with some lightness, with some... Um, easygoingness. And because Venus is in the sign of Gemini, as I said, conjuncting North Node, brilliant time to kind of readjust, to make adjustments around feeling broken in a sense. So whenever Cairo makes an aspect to a planet, it kind of unlocks the planet's secrets. So it's revealing something which is hidden, overlooked or even misunderstood. So in what ways do I feel uh, misunderstood or overlooked in my relationship? So or what am I looking over, overlooking when it comes to earning money or around my self-worth? So Chiron, as I said, is kind of that bridge between the visible and the invisible planets. So, oh, um, sorry, I made a mistake there. Um, 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 because Chiron is uh, connecting, sorry, the social planets with the uh, transpersonal planets. So it's connecting like Saturn and Uranus together. Sorry about that mistake. But anyway, it is still the same. So how am I connecting my personal stuff with the invisible stuff um, in that sense? So... Chiron functions kind of like in three ways. So first of all, we need to kind of, it wants to make us aware of what hurts and it wants to kind of bring the surface to the, uh, uh, wants to bring the problem to the surface. And then Chiron after that wants to heal that wound and that's happening through purging and sometimes crisis situations as well, if we are very stubborn of seeing what is going on in the in our life. And eventually that Chiron transforms the wounds into gift. 
Now, remember that it's connecting Saturn and Uranus together. Saturn in traditional astrology talks about uh, talent. If we work hard for it, then actually we get rewarded. And Uranus is something to do with your unique gifts. But with that Saturnian energy, there is this shyness going on. But with the Uranus energy, we want to reveal that type of um, um, uniqueness, what we've got. So Chiron is somewhere stuck in the middle, which talks about self-worth issues, and that comes with some type of emotional maturity. So with, as I said, with Venus, conjuncting Chiron is all about healing your heart in one way or another. So the question you're going to have to ask yourself is, what makes you stop before you actually open your heart to others? Or how am I stopping myself to love or to connect with others? Am I afraid of being loved? Am I actually suffering when someone is trying or when someone is giving me a compliment, for instance? Or in what ways uh, love is taken away from me? So why am, I, uh, why am I not letting go of something? Because Saturn is something which makes us like a hermit and Uranus wants to gain its freedom back. So that Chiron again beautifully connects these two energies. So um, yeah, so the process is not necessarily easy, but this time around, uh, actually, if you dig deeper and you go and look at what's buried inside your inside your heart, maybe but why you feel ugly or what are my what what's the issues around beauty and how can I solve that? Well, with that sextile element, it's all about getting out there, socializing with others, receiving compliment, and then taking them inside my heart. Now, the following day, Venus is still playing around. So the third aspect Venus is making, and that's going to be actually a trine to Saturn, which is going to be happening on 13 degree. Now, <clears throat> it's good for those who are in a relationship because this could bring <clears throat> more commitment. We can actually stabilize our relationships. So especially those ones who are just dating, maybe it's a brilliant day to kind of say that, okay, I want to be in a committed relationship. So the relationship can become more real, more grounded. But we don't just talk about personal relationships, but business partnership as well. So it's a very good day to crystallize any type of agreement with others. Remember, uh, Venus is in Gemini, which, which kind of talks about the formalization, the writing up of a contract. Uh, it's also very possible that you can be meeting someone who is able to give you very great advice. But it's also brilliant to face some of our fears around self-worth. And actually, this trine uh, is giving us an opportunity to work on something. It might be just the fact that uh, you speak to a guru and uh, um, that helps you to realize something within yourself. So, but also uh, Saturn might say that we're going to have to be a little bit more careful about our financials and we're going to have to give a little bit more structure to it. Saturn rules all about a all about structure, building something up from scratch. So it's also very good um, day to make some commitment around your food intake as well. But of course, because Venus is in the sign of Gemini, it's all about collecting some data before we make any type of commitment. So Saturn always tells you to be a little bit more cautious. Look at the technicality part of the agreement you are trying to make with others. Uh, also, this is a brilliant aspect to make long-term investments. Uh, it might not be looking that great at the moment, but in the long run, because with Saturn, we always build slowly and steadily. So, and then uh, even from those long-term investments, your relationship can also have a sensible benefit from it. Now, I would also say that um, um, it's very, very possible that you want to be, or you are gaining some type of ideas 
around uh, how to build on the future. So it's very much about creating something uh, for the long term. It might be something which I have desired for a very long time, so I want to build on those long term goals. Also, you might become a little bit more sometimes impersonal or a little bit more conservative approach or even classical approach to things because Saturn is more about modesty. So Venus rules your personal style. You might notice that actually you are going to start wearing something around black leather type of things or something more on the darker color side as well. However, as I said, uh, Venus is playing a major role this week, surely, because there is a T-square going on between Venus, Juno, Pallas Athene, and Neptune, which is actually starting on the 19th of May. It's going to be peaking on the 26th, and it's going to be ending on the 31st. Now, a T-square is when two planets are in opposition to each other, and then those two planets are also squaring another one. So Venus represents your Juno, uh, uh, your relationship. Juno actually talks about committed partnerships. Uh, and Neptune is kind of tells you that you're going to have to blend these two energies. And uh, with Pallas Athene, we need to have an element of strategy going on. So it could talk about some type of challenges in uh, the relationship department. Uh, and it's really talking about how are we going to be blending the two soul? Are we going to be taking that to a higher level? And that's very much about the Neptunian energy. Of course, with Neptune, sometimes you can be a little bit confused or there could be misunderstandings in the relationship. So be careful, especially around the peak of the lunar eclipse which is also um, going to happen on the 26th of May, that's when these aspects are peaking the most. So it's very, very important to be uh, watching out for relationship. Of course, the eclipse is going to be taking place also in the sign of Gemini. So I feel like Gemini and Sagittarius people have got a very great chance to form new relationships or letting go of old ones. But there needs to be an element of a change in your relationship department. Uh, now, the next day on the 20th, um, Sun will move into the sign of Gemini. And that's kind of an exciting period for the Sun because um, Sun was quite slow uh, in the sign of Taurus and now it's gained some type of speed. Uh, in Taurus, it was more about the earth. Now the focus goes on to the local community, something to do with the mind. Um, Sun in Taurus is more about personal pleasure. Um, Sun in Gemini is more about connecting with others and have pleasurous moments with others. Taurus is a cold and dry energy. Gemini is a hot and wet energy. So that cold, which is kind of makes us less active it kind of you know what do you do in winter you just go into your own room and you kind of seclude yourself a little bit so the heat element of gemini is actually raising the energy it makes us more active it makes us move around a lot more and then taurus again has got that dry part and gemini has got that wet part so the dry is more about separation and uh, looking for space. The wet is more about closeness, togetherness, creating some type of emotional bonds with others. So um, this is definitely a huge shift for uh, the sun. And uh, it's not necessarily a, a routine oriented energy like it was in Taurus. It, it is basing its energy more on spontaneity. So you might want to be looking at where Gemini house cusp is in your chart and things can be speeding up in that department. Uh, you can have quite an itchy feet with sun moving into uh, Gemini. So you might uh, notice that I cannot really sit down. I want to have new mental stimulations. I want to have new inputs. 
uh, in our life. And there is kind of like an informational, like hunger going on. Uh, but you might also feel that mentally you are a lot more fresh as well. Um, Gemini is kind of like a party sign, really. It wants kind of like fun, especially having Venus around there. Uh, and the sun is the planet of confidence. So you, when, you might even feel more confident about wherever the Gemini house cusp is in your chart. So for instance, if it's in your fourth house, you might feel a lot more confident about the move you maybe recently made or about the move, right? Or if it's in the seventh, maybe you feel more confident in your relationship as well, or you just feel more confident about speaking to your partner. This um, Gemini season kind of has got this busy bee type of energy, so we are a lot more buzzing. You might even want new learning experiences, or you might uh, sign up for uh, different type of workshops. Now, speaking about workshops, I'm going to be doing one on the physical traits of the potential marriage partner or our loved ones. Uh, happening on the 30th. And I'm also going to be making a uh, webinar on the 6th of June around about June. So the ideal marriage partner. So that might be a very exciting uh, course you might want to be um, taking into account. We've got two more aspects to cover. Uh, Sun, Jupiter actually square. So that's the only challenging aspect this week which is not so much challenging, actually. Uh, it's going to be taking place on the 21st of May, and both planets are on zero degree. So Jupiter is on zero degree of uh, Pisces, and Sun is on zero degree of Gemini. Now, the reason why this aspect is extremely crucial, because this is the first aspect Jupiter is making, in the last one week since he has moved into the sign of Pisces. And of course, it is a square. So first of all, you know, Pisces, I've spoken about Jupiter in um, uh, Pisces in free videos. Check those out if you are unsure. I'm not going to go into it uh, much in depth. But Jupiter in Pisces might be talking about some of the healing aspects of our life. Right, and Sun might be talking about some authority figures as well. There could be uh, slight changes, uh, but with Jupiter, we always overdo things as well. So maybe uh, the government is going to overdo something, spreading something very quickly. But on a personal level, this is all about new opportunities because both of the planets are on zero degree. So they are, they, they are basically exploring Jupiter, new territories, zero degree in your life. You might be actually having a completely new approach. From a technicality part of you, Jupiter is a lot stronger than Sun. So we always have to be a, a little bit cautious with that Jupiter, which is all about overdoing things. So we can overestimate our ability. We can overstretch ourselves. We can overpromise and then underdeliver um, eventually. You can be way uh, over inspired as well. And um, you know there is this saying in Hungarian: "Stretch as long as your blanket touches." So meaning that with this aspect, we always need to know our limits. And Jupiter, especially in Pisces, ignores any type of boundaries. So we might feel invincible because we are very optimistic. And eventually, it can lead to disappointment. It might not disappoint you, but it can disappoint others. So, and then the sun in Gemini says, which is actually a little bit more, it's weaker than Jupiter. And this is what we call in uh, Hellenistic astrology as an overcoming. So the sun needs to be overcome or overcome, meaning that we need to overcome not ignoring the facts, Gemini. The facts and the data needs to be looked at before you make any type of decision. 
So are you someone who is just going with the flow or are you someone who is going to be focusing and collecting data before actually it makes any type of decision? Um, so the Sun and uh, Jupiter square always has got this double-edged sword impact. So we can feel very confident, we can be very, uh, we can feel very lucky as well. And, um, um, and at the same time, it can lead to some type of losses and embarrassment as well. So there is always an element of respect, moderation, which is going to take you further. So to close this aspect off, it's all about standing back a little bit and uh, being um, more considerate about my next step. And um, of course, uh, sun also represents your ego and whatever Jupiter touches, it expands it. So we can experience that people around us might become a little bit more cocky or we might become a little bit cocky as well. And the last aspect of the week is Mercury square Neptune, which is going to be happening on the 22nd of May on 22 degree. So loads of 22s. And Mercury has been in its shadow period since the 15th. Now, I'm going to make a, v a separate video about the Mercury retrograde, and I'm going to be speaking a, a little bit more about the technicality part of these shadow periods as well. Because in my astrological experience, the Mercury shadow period is a lot more powerful than the um, retrograde period itself. And one of the reasons is because Mercury uh, is going to be meeting Neptune on the 22nd, but Mercury is, this is only the first hit. Mercury is going to be meeting Neptune three times. So once on the 22nd of May, then followed by the 5th of June, and lastly on the 6th of July as well. So this aspect brings plenty of confusion, miscommunication, misunderstandings, uh, I'm not a big fan of saying that don't sign contracts during Mercury retrograde period. However, this time around, I would say because it's easy to miss details. Uh, it, this aspect might be telling you that it's time to have a little bit of a mental break, kind of like tuning out of things. Maybe you want to be switching off your uh, social media platforms, your phone, and then just try to meditate, especially around those three days. I usually describe this aspect like trying to drive uh, uh, in a um, uh, in fog, or I usually see that you are not able to see the forest from the tree. So we tend to be just seeing what is really around us, but we don't see what is beyond those facts. And that's the Neptunian energy. So it's easy to miss things, details. Information can be completely unclear. We don't even know where this information comes from and we tend to be believing those. We might not know who to trust anymore or to trust my own abilities as well. So this is like, you know, when the horses are wearing, wearing those blindfolds type of energy. So it's just going ahead and I don't see what is coming from the side. So even it could lead to some type of um, uh, accidents, unfortunately, on the road as well. You might want to be looking out for that. So this is the period when I would say do not sign any contract, do not sign any type of commitments whatsoever. <clears throat> so this is uh, your weekly forecast uh, for week three in May. I hope it's helpful. Please uh, make sure you press like and, you know, all that lovely thing, uh, press the notification bell and subscribe to the channel so I can bring up more content. And by the way, I've also made a video about Pluto in Aquarius. I just wanted to be one of the first ones who shares their opinion about what this aspect might bring for us. So check that out on my YouTube channel as well. And I will be back very shortly with Saturn retrograde and how it might 
affect you. So thank you very much for your attention and bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.